Okay, so Opal and Jerry, it's a community-based uh, project which goes to unite like-minded people in order to uh, accelerate the scientific process to fight against aging. <coughs> we want to channel the energy of the people into an effective fight against aging. How do we do this? Within the Google Longevity, we create projects and encourage others to create their own, which have clear instructions for anyone and clear ways to be involved for anyone, for a scientist, for a medical doctor, for a patient, aren't we all patients when it comes to aging, uh, for a scientific an analyst, uh, for an IT person, for an investor. So clear instructions for anyone. But before I go to any details, I'd like to emphasize this, what are our goals? Of course, we want the therapies for our own, within our lifetime. We're not ashamed to say that we don't want therapies for our children, but of course we do want it. But for us, for us, it's very important. <coughs> it's very strange that within the scientific community, within the scientific conferences, not, scientists don't, don't talk about it. They're very distant from the science research they're talking about. We, don't, we want these therapies to exist and we want these therapies to be affordable. And for this to happen, we, want, we need this third point here, the exponential growth. The exponential growth of the amount and the quality of projects. And that's how we choose the projects we channel our limited resources into. We take a look at the project and we think, okay, is this going to uh, give the chain reaction? to other projects to evolve, to other funding to evolve. Of course, we have project problems, we all know about this uh, funding, uh, like anywhere in science and in longevity, it's dramatic. Uh, clinical trials in longevity is very complicated, there's a list of problems there, and I'd like to talk about um, an interesting problem we have. So there's actually a list of very promising therapies we have like 250-something general protectors existing on the market. You can go to any pharmacy and get those, but we cannot run clinical trials of those. It's not interesting Interesting for a pharma company. We cannot do it the old way. Uh, and I'm not even talking about these things as uh, diets, uh, as physical activity, and so on and so forth. It's very popular within the healthy community to give advices about all of those things, but we don't actually have clinical trials-based information about diets, about physical activity, about all of these compounds, and we need clinical trials for these things. And of course, yes, though on the one hand we're poor as church mice, and on the other hand, some of the people that do have funding, they have this, they have this vision of huge potential profit and it makes them paranoid and closed, and it's not scientific at all. It's not modern. How do we interact? How we change, exchange the information? How do we accelerate the process if we're so closed within our, like, Calico companies, for instance? So how does this start, the Ilko Longevity? We changed our Science for Lab Extension Foundation one day into a volunteer questionnaire. We've seen that a lot of people were very active on Facebook, and on offline events, so a lot of people started to ask us, okay, how can I help? Of course, the overpopulation question is very popular still, but the other very popular was, how can I help? Okay, so we did that. In two years, 300 people signed up, more than 200 within the first six months when we did several posts on Facebook. But that's the problem. We needed an entire HR department to deal with all those people. The other problem is that we needed a clear list of simple tasks for those people. Most of them don't speak English, most of them don't have any scientific background, but it would be a shame not to communicate with all of this community energy. And then we met Dima Vremenko. Dmitry Vremenko is the author of Nestarenia.ru. Nestarenia is uh, not Asian in Russian. This is the most popular blog within the Russian-speaking community, Dima writes, uh, affordable information, um, the proven information, what works and what's not in longevity. Pieces of advice is for anyone. So we started our longevity school together, first as single lecturers in Moscow, then, at, then as fully-fledged off-site camps, uh, even in Montenegro. 
And the other very popular question we had is this. Okay, so I heard all these very interesting facts you just told me. Where do I get the recipes for the diet and at what doses should I take metformin? This is very clear that people are not, very, not just interested in all those facts. We all know that they actually take all those drugs already. It's happening. It's happening, but they don't take any tests. They don't follow any protocol. They're not supervised by any medical specialists. Uh, it's chaos there. So our, request, our answer to that request was always, OK, guys, just wait a bit, just a few months. We will work out the design of an experiment, the protocol, and you will join us together. You will be supervised by a medical doctor, and we all will get some useful information from the trial. That's the slide I always show to our students. Uh, so what happens between now and then? Between now when we don't have the therapy and the, and the moment where we do have it. Clinical trials is an inevitable step. It has to happen, but we all know it's problematic. So that's why clinical trials of anti-aging therapies at the expense of the subjects, of the patients, is our like the main projects now, or the OPAL longevity. But I want to emphasize this. It's not just, mm, we just change the sponsor here. It doesn't mean that we don't use any documents, that it's not professionally observed. Everything's done as it's supposed to be, like GCP tells us to. It's just the sponsor is changing. So the owner of the results is changing here. It, it will be the subject, the subjects of the trial. We also have several other projects in Opal Longevity. It's clinical trials, diagnostics of aging and schools are the three most important. We also have a list of others. Like motivation, of course, is very important. Volunteer program, SMM, and so on and so forth. But I will focus on the three first. When I talk about Opal Longevity Diagnostics, uh, this is actually a list of tests, mostly blood work. It, although it exists, you can go to a lab in Moscow and go through these diagnostics. How did we choose uh, this test? First, of course, it has to be related to most common age-related diseases. <coughs> Bless you. Uh, second one, uh, those markers, they, they, they have to be possible to correct. We, we have to know how to treat them. But the third very important point, it's not always when you, when you can correct the marker, it doesn't always lead to life extension. It, it's, uh, well, some of you know it happens. So it has to lead to life extension. And using these three points, we created our Google Longevity Diagnostic Panel, but I want to say this first. This was created using the existing data on uh, PubMed. Our scientific analysts, they've been just working through the all the scientific uh, publications of the existing clinical trials and observational studies and, and stuff like this. And most of these analysts wouldn't have the access to all this data without this project, but the SciHub, maybe some of you know it. So thank you, Alexandra Lacan, also. And this is the diagnostic panel. Um, I'm not going to go through all the uh, all the points here. Most of this is blood work, as I said, and plus the ultrasound in the left down corner and ECG. Of course, it's not complete. You, know, you can make it a bigger one, but this is the minimum that can be used, at least. Uh, I, I should probably clear that. In Russia, it's possible for anyone to go to a lab without any prescription of a therapist and do any tests at their own expense. It's an affordable service. We have hundreds of labs all over the country, all over the Moscow. Uh, that's why it's working, probably. And we're working with this DNCOM lab in Moscow. It's a small one. The small ones are always the brave ones. Uh, 500 people within one year has gone through the diagnostics within just one lab. But we know there are hundreds of other labs in Russia. And as we're being active on social media and our list of tests. It's very public, so anyone can just go through the list and go to any affordable lab they have just close to their homes. We think that the people that gone through diagnostics is much more. So this is the price, 190 euro for now. 
we also read, uh, written a book, Diagnostics of Aging, to start the uh, to dialogue with the specialists, with medical doctors and other scientists, of course. Uh, so these are two happy authors. Uh, the book is it's paper, but it's also available in the electronic version. It's in Russian, yes, everything is in Russian, but in a, you, you can, I think you can translate it with Google Translator, the electronic version. Um, we also started the Biomarkers Improvement Championship. Uh, there's going to be a second champ in January. This is a motivational thing. So people are taking the tests and they using our therapy approaches, uh, and some of them, yes, improve their diagnostic results. Uh, we not only have the opinion on our diagnostics, but of course we take a look at others. Uh, we go through them, we describe them, this is the list, uh, probably this is the full list of all the diagnostics approaches there, and this is our uh, analyst, scientific analyst, who's done all the job. So, thank you, Alexei. So why is diagnostic so important? Of course it's important for science. There is no clinical trials without a diagnostic panel, of course. And even if a person doesn't take part in clinical trial, taking, going through diagnostics, so we will collect the valuable data on aging. It's important for popularization and initiation because uh, this is a very personal way of, uh, of popularization. If you go through diagnostics, you are into it. And funding, yes, it's very important too. Well, this is our, uh, we think so, we hadn't um, checked it yet. But we think that uh, making a possible sponsor go through diagnostics, knowing how, can it, how, he, how he can affect the results of his test and how it, how it relates to, the, to his personal possibility to extend his lifespan, it works better than any talk. Well, let's check this then. Uh, the second project is schools, School Against Asian, that's the website. Everything's in Russian again, sorry, because uh, we have Russian-speaking community. We've, got, we've done several schools, several in Moscow, several abroad in Montenegro. Uh, so these are the speakers, they're different. Uh, the medical doctors, young scientists, uh, uh, academics, you know, let's say Moscow there. Uh, the, the students are just simple people, let's say, but not only, uh, the people without scientific background, so the information is easy to understand, but anyone comes, we have medical doctors as students, so anyone comes there. And what we have other very important point there, every statement on our slide, it has a link to the article. It's just, it, it's nothing, it, it, it's not that we invent something. <laughs> uh, everything is based uh, on some scientific research. So this is an example of the last one, of the last school in Montenegro in October. This is a list of lectures. We've been doing for seven days, so I'm not going to go <laughs> through the whole list, but if you're interested, what are the topics there? Yeah, we're done. Um, so this is a typical schedule. You can see we have physical activity every day. Of course, lectures and what and about the breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Of course, you cannot talk about the proven ways to extend your lifespan with foods and feed people with uh, fried <laughs> chicken or something. Everything has to be related to what we're teaching them, of course. So, we developed our own diet. This is the food that people have been eating in this Montenegro thing. So if we're going back to, to the schedule, you can see that actually a person being at school, he's being exposed to a very mild um, anti-aging therapy. So that's why we encourage people to take tests to go through diagnostics before and after the school. And those people who actually go through diagnostic and um, show the high level of compliance during the school, they see the improvement of the results. That is very cool. So he, they, are, they are being in the pilot version of clinical trial within the school. Also, it's a way to meet people, of course. Here is Alexei Moskalov's post on Facebook. He is saying in Russian, of course. Well, I'm not going to I'm not going to talk about his scientific part here, but he's saying thank you, 
uh, to a sponsor that he managed to do some scientific work. And this is the sponsor, Nikolai Sidorov here. Guess where they met? So Alexei was a speaker at our school, uh, Nikolai was uh, the student. I'm sure Nikolai would never go to any scientific conference and sit through and, uh, all the lectures, understand everything, take part in projects. Here's, uh, uh, he's actually, the picture is, uh, uh, he's taking part of a project. So he's trying to invent his own approach to scientific research. It gives it another level of uh, involvement into the thing. So that's why I think they connected so well. So schools are ecosystem for longevity community. Of course, education, motivation, networking, we launch research there, as I showed with Alexei and Nikolai, and it's a pilot clinical trial. So people try to be in a clinical trial, and then they take part in the real ones. And it's also profitable, so you can actually do this, and it works. It's self-sustainable. Uh, so clinical trials is the main project now, though I think I'm... How much time? Two minutes, okay. So we have the website. Again, sorry guys, in Russian. But it has uh, all the instructions for a participant, the step by step. So mm -hmm. this is the description of the diets. We started with the diets as a very safe way um, to, expo to to treat people because we experiment with their organizational part. That's why we didn't want to risk with the whiskey therapy. That's why the diets. Also, it's very uh, pretty for people. They they love they just love to take pictures of food and go through the recipes on Instagram. That's why we expect a lot of people to join. So this is a step-by-step -step instruction, what questionnaire to fill in, what tests to take before and after, everything. Uh, this is the examples of food they have. We, we treat people with... Um, they get uh, the personalized cookbooks. So they upload their age, their... Uh, uh, the level of physical activity and BMI, and that's we personalize the amount of food they should have. Uh, what I want to say is that we just we're assigning the roles, but we don't say that uh, we do it differently. Uh, the sponsor is a subject plus open longevity us as organization. We're trying to do some other funding here. This means that the subjects will have the results of the trials. This means that we refuse ourselves with the commercial interest here. This is very important. We don't want to be uh, interested in any commercial result to be open, to be objective here. Uh, and the CRO, of course, we will be the part, partly as a CRO here, as a contract research organization. Um, and this is essential documents, of course, where we do need to have those. I. Um, Informed concern for. I think this is the most important one within the trials that are patient oriented this much. And I'm saying that it has to be as close to GCP as possible, uh, good clinical practice. Actually, there's no problem because uh, there are two main things in GCP that are based on the safety of a patient and good quality data. We're interested in the same two things here. Just from a bureaucratical point of view, we will have to do things a bit differently. That's, a, that's why I'm saying as close as possible. But the goal is the same. And we want to do it with medical specialists. And if I'm saying about... Yes, we don't have time, yeah? Okay. So if I'm going back to the list of problems, lack of funding. Okay, diagnostics of aging is a bit of a thing. It uh, actually can give you some profit to fund other research. Uh, Schools, as I uh, emphasized, uh, they are they are even giving they are giving you some funding as well, and yeah, clinical trials are a bit more complicated because people pay for their therapies and pay for their diagnostics, but you still have some administrational costs and it's complicated. That's where we're looking for some extra money from sponsors, uh, but still it helps. Um, and what about the third point? Yes, where. Not looking at any profit here. We're a non-profit. Uh, that's why we're open. Uh, I'm getting, I'm getting questions and critique uh, every day because uh, we publish everything on our website, and on Facebook, and it's helping because we're working out uh, some things that I don't that, that didn't work before. Uh, 
So I'm, I'm advising you to do the schools, do the diagnostics, and uh, do the clinical trials together if you want so. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. That's my picture on Facebook. That's it, I guess. Thank you so much. Questions. Maybe someone hasn't asked a question. I've got to see, I have no choice here with the question. Um, uh, fantastic. And uh, uh, you are publishing now and uh, doing this in Russian. I want to help you to do it in Spanish. And the same to Mikhail Greven. Yeah. What he's doing in Germany, I want to do it for Spain and Latin America because we are breaking ground uh, with what he's doing in Germany and what, what you are doing in Russia. So, how can he help you to do this in Spanish too? Uh, okay, you know, if you want to do the schools, you just have to find the place to run the lectures, uh, and that's it, actually. Uh, anything else, we will provide it. We can, we, can, we, can, we can organize Russian people to come to Germany or to Spain, or if you find uh, the local community as uh, students, then it will, you will have to help us with the local speakers to speak uh, the native language there. That's it. Uh, anything else is quite simple, I guess. So it's it's a work to be done. We should we should communicate. That's that's it. So Anastasia, uh, yeah. So uh, as far as I understand that, uh, according to GCP, you need to still to be a medical organization to do clinical trials. Did you think of uh, to try to find just? Uh, uh, medical clinics, even like private ones, to sign up and to do it according to all the rules, or do you think it's too hard for you to know? Um, okay, so a sponsor doesn't has to be doesn't have to be a medical organization. A CRO has to be anything. As um, as to a site, a, a hospital where you should take the patients, uh, talk to them, sign the informed consent. Yes, it has to be done. Uh, only with the medical specialist, that's true. We're hiring the IP now, the private, the, the, the investigator into the clinic. So DMCOM, the lab that I was talking about, they actually have small clinics in Moscow. So this would be our center for the, for the start, for clinical trials. Um, for the trials of diets, uh, the, the regulations are not so strict. So local ethical commentary would be enough there. Yes, we've gone through the procedure, it looks doable. <laughs>